this evening. Nice to see so many people out at our meeting. Um, Hilton Parish Council. Um, agenda, sorry, I was just read number one. It was. Um, so, item one on the agenda is to receive any apologies for absence and declarations of interest. And we've had three apologies for absence this evening from um, Anne, Doreen, and Simon. And we've all seen the reasons why they're not here. Um, I trust that you're happy with those reasons. And we would like to um, propose that those reasons are accepted. Okay. Would anybody like to second that? Okay. Thank you. Thank um, you. And any declarations of interest? Yes, I have a peculiar interest in my class wages. Thank you very much. Anybody got to any other interest in the Fine. Thank you. All right, so that's item one of the agenda attended to. Um, now we uh, close the Parish Council meeting and open the floor. Um, first off, I'm going to invite Nigel and Ray to come talk to us about the ideas that they have for the Capability Brown Year um, 300, 300 year celebrations next year. And so they've come over because obviously Capability Brown was Lord the Manor uh, for Pentastanton and Shorten. 300 years is not an insignificant milestone. And over to you, gentlemen. Well, thank you very much. Mm. Do you mind if I stay? No, no. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sure everybody did. Um, 2016 sees the 300 year celebrations of Cape Booty Brown. Uh, for those of you who are not aware, that he was actually given the parish of Fenstanton and Hilton. Or Hilton Fenstanton, which might be a better way around doing it, <laughs> as, as we're in Hilton at this point. Um, and he was given that in part payment, I think, by the Duke of Northampton in 1760 something or other. Uh, he was owed some money by the Duke of Northampton, and the Duke of Northampton couldn't pay him, so he said, Why don't you have this bit of land? And so it was the only piece of land that he actually owned as, as a kind of master gardener, landscaper, and architect, and engineer, and everything else that he was, he was in his time. Um, and in 2016, there was a national movement to celebrate the work of, of Capability Brown. He did um, actually uh, landscape some 300 pieces of land in this country. Um, think of all of the kind of major stately homes, and he had some influence in those. Um, but this piece of land, in terms of this parish, was the only piece of land he actually physically owned. He was. Um, to, to, you know, to put it, uh, I suppose, bluntly, like many people, he was just a working guy. He, was, uh, he dealt with incredibly wealthy people who had an amazing vision, I think, for the fact that he would actually go to their places, move trees, move landscape, build lakes, and then walk away with his little twigs in the ground and say, don't worry, it's a couple of years time, it will look great. <laughs> if you can imagine, you know, going into Moonball Hall and imagine they're all looking like little kind of sucklings, it wouldn't look like it is now. So, these people had an amazing vision because they were never going to see what he did, but he's left this amazing legacy around the country, and 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 there is a huge movement uh, in the country now to celebrate that. Every one of the large organisations like the National Trust, English Heritage, Visit Britain, Visit England, the Parks and Gardens, and every one of the stately homes and uh, is involved actually in this in this. Uh, this celebration, this festival. Um, there is there is a, going to be a National Museum at Somerset House, there's going to be lectures at the V&A, uh, Channel 4 are making a three hour program, uh, three, three one hour programs about it with um, Alan Titchmarsh and in fact I met the directors of the program the other day and they're, they're going to be filming locally in June, I think they're coming here on, on the green here because of the, uh, the trees that are planted by Gabriel Brown. Uh, in the t at the time, and they're going to Finstanton, he's obviously buried in the church of Finstanton. Um, so, really the thinking was, what could we do to actually celebrate this? It's going to be a, ma a massive opportunity because there's going to be you know, people coming literally from all over the world to our parish, um, or our two parishes, really, now, because it was two parishes now, um, to actually view his works and, and, and get a feel of what's going on. Now, we, we spoke about some ideas in Finstanton, um, we're going to be, um, we're certainly in the church, we're, the, the memorial in the church in Constantin is going to be renovated. Um, there's going to be a legacy kind of plaque and uh, plan put in the, uh, in the churchyard, uh, which uh, parish, uh, our parish council is kind of partially funding, um, because the, the headstone is, is tucked around the corner, so we'd like something when people walk through the churchyard so they know they're 
come into that way. Um, the church itself there is going to be one of the one of two ambassador sites in the country. Um, there are a number of n nominated sites. That there's ten um, information centres, which are going to be some of the major stately homes, and then there's going to be ambassador sites. The two ambassador sites are where he was buried and where he was born. At, um, which I can't remember where it is. In, Kirkham, Kirkham, in, Northumberland. in Northumberland, where he was born. And those are the two areas. Um, on the um, the bank holiday, the August bank holiday Sunday of the. Uh, of 2016, the Church of Finstant is going to a memorial type service because that's the closest that they can get to his actual birth. It's his actual baptism was then, but they can't actually, they don't, they don't know when he was actually born. Um, in um, in Finstant, I don't know if you're familiar with an event that we run called Fringe in the Fen, but we're going to be rerunning that and we're going to be theming that on um, English landscapes as a kind of theme for the actual, for all the music that's been played there. and. Uh, Graham Ross, who is the festival director, who's also the director of music at Clare College in Cambridge, is uh, proposing to compose something around that theme, which we will, which we will premiere during that, during that week. Um, I've spoken to the local authority about the idea of putting some road signs up. I thought it would be really nice if we, could, if we could have some signs that when you come into the villages of Hilton and Stanton, it says, Welcome to Cape Brown's Parish. A bit like when you go into Norfolk, it says, Welcome to Nelson's. County. I think that would be nice, and that, that can be done as long as we can find the money for it. They're quite happy to put the signs up, so that's not a problem. Uh, there was one discussion about maybe planting a further tree on the green in, as part of the uh, park here in Hilton. Um, his, his, uh, his signature trees were lead with the Cedar of Lebanon trees, and it would be nice if we could plant one of those. That would actually be a nice commemoration to actually have. And we're really open to lots of other ideas that we've got. We're going to do in Penn Stanton and Open Gardens. Um, um, and, I, and I thought it would be great if, if Hilton could do an Open Gardens as well. And then, and then people could come from all over the country to visit the gardens, which now form part of the parish of you know, Cape Bruce Brown Parish. So there's lots of different things we could do. And it was really just a question, question of, you know, is there an interest here in Hilton to get involved? I met with Joe and uh, to talk about that. And it was... There seem to be, which they invite us long to come along to speak to today. Um, really open to suggestions and ideas, but I just think it's a fantastic opportunity for us to celebrate something which nobody else has got. You know, this was the only bit of land he owned. Um, oh, you're doing a walk, aren't you, as well? Yes, around, around yeah. The, yeah, you're yeah. working with... There the, are, yeah, I'll, very briefly, there are three... Uh, the Cambridge Gardens Trust is leading a lot of the uh, celebration. They've taken it upon themselves to pull things together. And... Um, they are um, producing three or four walk leaflets in local areas. One will be Wimpole, one will be the Backs at Cambridge, one will be Maddingly because he was involved in that, and the other one will be Fenced Out. And, and we're well on the way of getting that walk organised. Just a short walk which will attract people. Leaflets will be out everywhere. Um, and so they will, So if, there's, if the, the, these walk leaflets will be out at Wimpole and places like that. So that sort of thing. Yeah, we'd also, like, we'd also like to try and document the houses that were actually here when he owned the land. Because I think that would be actually quite fun to do that as well, because I'm sure some of the houses here in this village date back to the, that time, and if we could document that. We've got some plans that indicate houses that are around, but I just think it would also be fun to just recognise the kind of history that was around when he was here. So, I mean, Manor Farm, uh, the... the, um, the, the, was it the um, the manor house at, on, the, on Manor Farm at Fenstanton. And, Fenstanton, and that was one of the houses yeah. that he that he owned and he got as part of the package of land and reportedly he rented that straight away with the with the land because you know he needed income you know suddenly he's great having this kind of big piece of land he'd been given but like I've now I've got to look after it I'm responsible for it so he rented out everything uh, the the manor house in Fenstanton was a, reputedly is the house that he retained to live in when he was on his parish. Uh, he still retained his house at uh, Wilderness House in Hampton Court because that was that was came with his job as the head gardener at Hampton Court. But when he died, he lost, which he died travelling back north, and they carried brought his body, then continued the journey and brought him here. Um, he died in North London, and they they brought him up. Um, but his family then moved into the house and lived there for some time. Uh, and his brother was a, a very high-ranking uh, admiral in the navy. Uh, I think it was a son. Son, rather. And then what, the other one was a one, was a one was a vicar, um, one was a, as, was uh, Admiral of the Fleet for yeah. a while. 
and the other one was a uh, member of, took over for, because Cape Billy became, became Member of Parliament for Huntingdonshire, and he took over. Yeah, because he was the Lord of the yeah. Yeah. So there's lots of history there, it'd be yeah. great to actually there, are, there, was, there are quite a few maps on the village archives, digital archives, that go predate Capability Brown. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So either you can have a look on there, it's under the documents and maps section, or I'm happy to dig them out for you. Oh, I'll I'll do Tell me the details before you go. Yeah, no, we, we, we're collecting lots of information. We just, we just learned that somebody managed to find that they found the receipts and the kind of sources of trees that, mm. that, that were planted mm. here. Yeah, um, so that, and they cost six pence each. Can I just say that? Was, was there a layout map? I know he always drew great maps of what he was like. Yeah, there was a map of Fen Stanton which he had drawn up by a chap called Spire, um, which seems to, and we have a copy, which seems to show a vision of um, Transforming some of the land um, around Fenstad into a um, into a, a manor. Really. Did that include Hilton? Um, no, it didn't. The, the map well, seems to be there, sure. there is a map from Spire. Is a Hilton? It, well, yeah. we've only got it where it sort of it sort of falls short about halfway between the two oh, parishes. Yeah. So probably there is another one. Yeah. There's the, the common rights. He, yeah. he owned the common rights. That's right. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. um, and the manor house here is yeah. in his deeds. Yeah, he was the owner of that. That's still in the deeds. Mm. He seemed to have put on these maps um, figures relating to all the properties that he owned, but the book that he kept the <laughs> details in has gone missing. So all we have is the numbers and, 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 ver and a few facts. He also owned property, in, uh, not property, but land in Great <coughs> right as well, so he owned quite a lot. Yeah, but it would be great to get together and actually try and put all this together because I think, it's, as I said, there is, there is a national interest in, in this. Is there any sort of dates of when it's going to get run? Like the, well, no, it will run. It's all year. It's all year. Yeah, it's all year. It's all year. basically all year. <laughs> I think the um, the permanent exhibition to go to the church in Penstanton will go in, I think they're talking about March, April time, and run through the year. Yeah. Um, certainly what we are proposing to do in terms of open gardens is going to be June, yeah. uh, and then the Fringe of the Fen is going to be the July. 1st of July, and then we've got the commemorative um, uh, event. In, the, in August, so. and the channel four given any indication of when their program might be. They're going to shoot it in June. I think they're going to screen it in the autumn. That's this year. This year. This year. Okay. To raise awareness. Yeah. 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 We had the um, we had the producers round, and they're very very keen that there's some apple trees in in the garden of Hensington, and they're very keen that they that Alan Titchmarsh can sit on one of the apple trees and eat an apple crumble, eating the apples off people in the tree. But you know, it is TV. <laughs> <laughs> Just to add to what Nigel, Nigel said, we have a committee that would form, um, given the blessing of, of our parish council. They, they're not involved in it, but they, they gave us a blessing and uh, said, go ahead and go away and do it. And um, they, they gave us a small grant towards the um, um, and legacy um, sign we're going to do, um, and we're keeping them informed. But we have this committee. We have we've we've been meeting for six months. We meet regularly every month, so plans are afoot, providing we can get the money. So if you did decide to, to form a committee or do anything, um, then we're quite happy to liaise with you and uh, and keep in touch. Or even or even join our committee Absolutely. and just have one rather than two, because I think this is a. Yeah, I think it's combined, combined mm -hmm. it would be lovely if we could do something combined. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And obviously you've put a lot of hard work into it so far. <laughs> yeah, there, is, there is a website, uh, capabilitybrown.org, if you want to go onto that website. Um, uh, it will give you a really good feel of what's going on nationally. Yeah. And I think uh, I did read back of when yeah. we were looking first. And you can register for that and you'll be kept up to date with newsletters and everything that's going on by the National Committee. But there's quite a driving force behind what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. Have we got any questions? No. Okay. Anybody on the floor got any questions? No. Can I do a Thank you for your offer. Give me details about all of them. Yeah, I'm not calm. Oh, yeah. You might think. Yeah. And we're going to. Um, then discuss that at item 3.2 on the agenda. Okay. And um, Joe can give you some feedback. Question back. Question yeah. back from John. Yeah. Um, because of the maintenance of the, of the maze and the surrounding area, 
Is it possible to let us know, sort of a couple of three weeks in advance, as to when Channel 4 are coming so that we can get it? They're coming in June. I don't know exactly when, but if I, if I get the date, I'll let you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I'm like Clean the children. Scrub and put the Yes. Are there any descendants of? Do you know, I don't know the question answer that. I know there's, there's quite a few buried in the church, if that helps, but I don't know where the rest of the I think, I think that from, from what we've gleaned from some of the books, there, um, there were, up until, I, mean, yeah. um, I can't remember when, but there, there were for quite a long while after he died, there were a few generations lived in the area. There was a connection with Ellsworth because, um, was it a brother or something, or a brother of his wife or something, somebody moved, lived in Ellsworth. And as I say, the sons were around. So there, the connection was in the area, probably with Hilton as well, for a while afterwards. But um, I don't think there's anything now. That's a shame. But you never know. Mm. And it's these right. things, these right. things, things keep coming out. Who do I think I am? I'm just saying that. Oh, yes, of course. It's my family too. Yeah, I think they definitely want to film um, so what I can gather around this part. What they're saying. Yeah. Yeah, whether it yeah. gets a horse, yeah. ends up on the sort of cutting in the field. Well, I've never known really ever since. I never quite did it in the sky before when I was probably on the cutting room floor as they went past. But you never know. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So that's all we're going to do. We'll discuss that at 3.2 when we come to it on the agenda. So now we'll go on to the um, area of the meeting, the closed section of the meeting, which is about uh, members of the public invited to speak. Uh, usual um, rules, once only, no longer than three minutes, and it's got to be on the agenda. Anybody like to start off? Okay. Um, I'm meant to believe that. Uh, there's a meeting in the HA on the A14 this week. Mm -hmm. um, I'm about to believe there's two people going from the from the village, but I think they're both from connected to the parish council or the A14 working group. And I just wondered if there'd been any thought given to someone else going who wasn't actually connected to the sort of same group, like sort of somebody from Hat or something to give some different kind of input to that meeting. I just wondered if there'd been any thought given to that. Um, I'm sure we'll discuss that when we get to 3.4. I wasn't at the meeting when it was decided uh, he was going to go. The working group had a reasonably short time scale to get names in, two names, parish, parish councillor and parishioner, and um, that's, what, that's who's going. Well, then, parish councillor and parishioner. One's from the A14 working group, though, isn't it? So they're yes. both more or less the same. Obviously working on yeah. behalf of the parish yeah. council, <coughs> way their way through the 700 pages, and um, yeah, the and that was the decision that was made. Right, okay. I just wondered, because it, well, I thought it might have been extremely helpful to have had, you know, someone else might have had some different ideas that hasn't come out of the <coughs> working group. Somebody might have had some different ideas and it may have been beneficial to have had some ideas from someone else. Like, that's what I thought to me. But we got the meeting on Thursday. Yeah. yeah. So um, please do come along. Certainly will. Thank you. Anyone else? Andy? Quick one. Uh, really, 3.3. 3. Uh, uh, what's that? Green. Green management open spaces. I uh, mentioned this at the last meeting. Um, the document's now 11 months old regarding open, uh, green open spaces, so there's no map attached to it, so it's difficult to reference anything that's done there. And there are two other documents on there that are now six months old. Really, could we try and get those documents updated because they're pretty useless as they are. Thank you, Andy. Anybody else? Okay. On that basis, we'll close the open session and reopen the closed session. Um, so the item two on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the previous meeting of the Parish Council on the 26th of January and the Planning Committee meeting on the 19th of January. Now that's come 
for this meeting because of people who were at the planning committee meeting. There weren't enough. There weren't enough at the last one to, to yeah. And there are three of you who were at the meeting on the 26th of January. Uh, sorry, on the 19th of January to be able to approve those minutes because I wasn't mm -hmm. at that. You were as well, so that's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, first of all, the meeting of the 26th of January. You've had the agenda items. Oh, sorry, you've had the minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, Just to say, there was one small change because I put the wrong date on it, but it has been, the date's been corrected. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody happy with the um, proposed amendment, which is to change the date at the top to January? Yes. yes. Yeah. And um, I propose that those <coughs> minutes are accepted. Yeah. You'd like to second? James. Uh, just a second. Yeah. So, and um, all those in favour? Yeah. Thank you. That's the minutes of the 26th of January Parish Council meeting. Graham, I'll let you talk about the planning committee meeting for the 19th of January, Mr Chairman. Can you just confirm who was at the meeting? Because Williams just whispered in my ear that he wasn't there, he doesn't think. Um, I've got you down as being there. He was there. I'm confused. That's, that's I was, that one. Was, <laughs> there's three of us there. Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 So there's three of us. There's yeah. three of us that happened. Yes, because there were was really those that were there were myself. Yeah. It was Gilly, a very short meeting. Anne and Willie. Yeah. Just to, just to refresh us, this was to do with the, uh, the minor extension at the back of the Six Maze Road, which we recommended for approval. So if you guys are happy, yeah. it was the meeting that closed at 7.45 and started at half past seven. Um, you happy? Yeah. Proposer? Yeah. I propose we sign it. I'll second You in favour? Okay. Have you got that? Yeah. Right. Sign. Nice sign. Mm -hmm. That's lovely, thank you. Okay. So, well done. Yep. That leads us on to item three of the agenda, which is matters arising at Harry Court in the last meeting for discussion decision. Um, item 3.1 is casual vacancy. This is not the television series or the book, but the vacancy on the parish council. Um, now, I've done myself some notes. That's all right. Easily <laughs> done. Um, I've done myself some notes because I just wanted to explain a little bit about the process and how it works. Because obviously this is the first um, <coughs> vacancy we've had on the Parish Council since July 2013. So, um, I was very delighted to see we had four people put their names forward for consideration to accept uh, to be co-opted onto the council. And in alphabetical order, uh, those individuals are Rob Pollard, Andrew Parkinson, Sarah Partridge, and Theresa Williamson. So thank you very much indeed for uh, expressing an interest. Um, there was only one vacancy, so I'm apologising for the forefront if you're disappointed at the end of the evening but please do keep your eye out because there may be other vacancies come up and um, we're delighted that you have shown an interest in joining the parish council. Uh, we've had, the, they've all applied and they're all um, eligible to stand for election. Uh, now, in a co-option election the winner must have an absolute majority. This means that one candidate must have more votes than the combined votes of any other candidate. So in this instance, if you had a split of votes and the person with more votes didn't have more votes than the three other people together, we would have to hold another round of voting and the person with the least number of votes would have to be excluded from the next round of voting until we got to a position where there was a, an absolute majority. Okay, you happy? Yeah. <coughs> and that's what that happens there. The, boat, the ballot is a closed ballot. Um, Joe's got some ballot papers. We will hand those out. We'll ask you to put um, your vote on those. They'll come back in. Joe will count them. I'll verify the count. We'll announce the first part, you know, what the result is at that point. Uh, 
and then uh, read out whether there's a need for another vote or whether we have a winner. At that point, um, we'll carry on with the meeting. Uh, the person who is successful in um, the election would be um, invited to make their declaration of acceptance of offer on or before the first meeting of the parish council after their election. Uh, so they won't be joining the parish council today. They will be invited to come to the next meeting and sign their declaration of offer. We just had some new forms register of interest that we've had to sign send out to Boom Hunter and District Council so they'll be able to sign these big bows and that would then be put um, put in to be able to join the Parish Council at the next meeting. Okay, so any questions on the process? Are you happy with the process? You know the four people who have been nominated yeah. or have nominated themselves, sorry. And um, so I would like to propose that we will Conduct the vote on that basis. Can I have a second for that? Yeah. And are you all in favour of doing it this way? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. Right then. So. And where can I ask you to the second for the purpose of the process? It's good. Just get the whole thing half and that's everybody's paper from the back of the bench, so there's no possibility of um, yeah. Uh, because it is a secret um, ballot. And um, we would uh, so that. So in fact, uh, we have a, um, a majority, a clear um, winner on that election, and I would I'm delighted to announce that it's Andrew Parkinson who has been co-opted on the Parish Council. Congratulations, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Rob and uh, Sarah and Teresa um, for putting their names forward. I'm sorry um, that they haven't on this occasion. But there, um, please do. We appreciate your support and interest, and you know, never know. <laughs> so, there's no changes on. Uh, there's item 3.1 covered. Item 3.2 is 300 year capability brand celebration. 300 year capability brand. So, we've heard from Nigel. And Ray about what they're doing at Fenton Stanton, and uh, obviously it sounds like um, that would be something excellent for Milton to be involved with yeah. and to support. Um, thoughts and comments? Just to annoy Mick, presumably. Yeah. yeah, and there's some things that were discussed here. I mean, presumably we'll be joining with Ben. That's, yeah. that's the best. Yes. That's the most I don't think we should. I think it should be one for this year. Yeah. Six months here. Start. Yeah. 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 But I mean, it's obviously we have to share. Yeah. Because yeah. it's going to look rather strange. Yeah. People aren't allowed to go and visit yours. Yeah. <laughs> so they did. It was. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of flat. Now I think certainly things like the garden do lots more opportunities to link up. I mean, there may be even an opportunity. 
um, for next year if we start talking about these things early enough to, to theme face week to capability brown instead of you know Disney characters or whatever it, it, it currently is. So that might be a little angle in there. The um, produce show as well could perhaps either do, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah, could do um, either sort of capability theme show or perhaps a special award yeah. just to yeah. do my yeah. brown. So do we have to sort of vote on a number of people or suggest a number of people? Whether it's parish councillors or parishioners. I mean, there's no sort of data about which we have to climb on board, is there? Maybe they do. They do. Yes. That's right. Yes. yes. But I suspect we'll be falling in on what they've done, won't they? Is it a volunteer group looking to run this? Yeah, it would make a lot of sense, wouldn't it? Perhaps it does. It will be a the council nominated a couple of um, <coughs> people to, to join that committee. Mm -hmm. I think it's um, whether it's should be on the council as well. well mm -hmm. Not necessarily on the council, but they will make a good contribution. Yeah. So I don't know whether it's worth um how about putting something into spectrum. Yeah. 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 Put something into spectrum, um, put something up on, on the website and give the parish a, a good month to think about whether they'd like to be part of this. Um, go back or we'll bring the indication to Ben Stanton that yes, we would like to join yeah. your committee, numbers and names to be given to you in a, in a month's time. Yeah. And in the intervening period, obviously, Joe can carry on correspondence and keep up to date with anything that's mm. moving along the, in, the, in the intervening period. Yeah. Can I suggest we contact Ben Stanton Group and see how many they got? Yeah. We need to have an indication of how many people we're looking for. Yeah, too many. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. And so we need to support them rather than swap them. Yeah. Health and then we see it. Yeah. Yeah. We said one this I think that's a good first thing to do. Yes. And then based and on then that, that would affect the we'll discussion. Yeah. Are there any other groups in the village? Peaceful Report, the Fire, or the Fire Club. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. We'd like to put a name for it. Yeah, true. Perhaps Joe could contact those groups. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then, if, um, they, if, if on the basis of either A, um, a couple of residences from that group of people go to the Ben Stanton bit, mm -hmm. rather than sort yes. or if Ben Stanton are happy to have, well, they, they can mix them. Yeah. 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 That would be good. And I would also, Ask Joe if you could contact uh, Nigel and Ray and see if you can get a, a feed into the Channel 4 producer to try and find out when they are coming to a village. Yeah. 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 That's a good point about the John May about when. Yeah. Because he's yeah. 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 yeah, spruce up. Well, well no, no, just yeah. it would be nice because then people, we could let people know yeah. when they tend to be. <laughs> 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 Yeah. Is that okay? Mm. Yeah, so that through Spectrum, who's starting off? Joe's going to come contact yeah. the group mm. in the village. Yeah. WR. Oh, she needs to contact Black Group. Yeah, the head of the school. Yes. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. Thank you. So we don't get too many and yeah. whittle them down. Yeah. But we should also be involved with those groups in the Because mm -hmm. yeah. regardless of that good point about um, Swampton, but mm. whatever that committee ends up deciding activity wise, you need a lot of support for that. Oh yeah. 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 So it's been <coughs> And money is to be involved, isn't it? Yeah, not least for the signs. Uh, that yes, was. that's quite nice. Yeah. I like that. I do yeah. like that. Yeah. Capability Brown's Manor. Yeah. Patch yeah. Yard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like when you go to and see those sides from Nelson County. Yeah. Should we? Be good. Mm. Okay. And I'm sure that that year will soon, soon be upon us. Mm. 2016. Thank you. Uh, Kieran. Item 3.3 Green Management Hub. Open spaces, tree work, update. Mm -hmm. A few things really. Um, it's tree work. I think uh, I've only had positive comments about um, work mm -hmm. Andy Fennett did in the village last month. Mm -hmm. so, 
Um, I got a call from um, a prisoner in Cross Park Post, and we were happy with where the two big trees were taken down. So I think that was uh, positive. That was a tricky old mm. job. Yeah. I wonder if um, Parish Council should uh, write to Andy, thank him for what he did. Um, I it was, you know, it was done very, very sensitively and he did it quickly, yeah. safely, very professional. Yes. Yeah, that's very good. Uh, and the wood got collected, I take it? But the wood looked like it was in hand. It was. Was it went through? Oh, well, that's good. Cheer that evening. Thanks. Good. Um, other things in the village, the maze has had uh, a bit of work done. Um, it's very uh, diligent work by John Carter. I think it's uh, very good for this time of year. So thank you for John for that. Yeah. Um, so not quite so good. The, um, um, obviously they've not had a particularly bad winter, but there's an awful lot of wear and tear on the green at the moment. Um, paths we know about, and we stopped from the mowing back in October. Um, obviously they've not had a real growing season yet, so they're still looking a bit ropey. Mm -hmm. um, John and I were keeping, when we start with keeping an eye on that, and just making sure that they, <coughs> um, they're well they're healed before the mowing starts again. Um, particular concern is the football pitch. I don't know whether anybody's it been out terrible. there, but it it's seems to have degraded very, very quickly. Yeah. The last two weekends, yeah. particularly. Um, and it's the whole area as well. Well, I think that it's we know the, the soil conditions out there are clay, which mm. holds up the water. So uh, the surface becomes very, very fragile, and mm. it's degraded very quickly. To a point, I think, where we need to be a bit concerned that it's actually going to be able to recover mm. in a growing season without um, any yeah. intervention, which obviously involves expense. Um, I think because of the way it's degraded in the last two weekends, I think really Parish Council should do a, an inspection probably on a Friday and let the football clubs know whether it's suitable to play on over the weekend. It's quite a big thing to do, you know, to sort of say it's not <coughs> but, um, playable. But if, it's, uh, if we let that degradation go on, I think we'll have a big problem. I agree. Um, well, I said, I'm cool from my playing days that the council would decree whether or not, obviously not here, but would decree whether the park would be used for the football pitches. Right. And if it was waterlogged or, or um, but they wouldn't allow football to be played in order to preserve. So if you're happy that happened, maybe yeah. I don't know whether you know whether you could just have a walk out of the yeah. Um, yeah. Just because of it does look should we um, give Nadine a bit of forewarning? I don't say it's fair, yeah. Yeah. inspection's going to happen. Yeah. We're not prejudging at the moment, but we'll let you know. We do need to make sure it isn't damaged beyond repair. Well, the thing is, if that happens, then we're going to be there for some receiving you know, the spring, which is complicated, as we know from the work we've done by the, uh, where the tent goes, mm -hmm. it's got to be the right grass, it's uh, yeah, I was going to say, mix. Ian will we'll love that, won't he? Yeah. We get down with his variants of seeds and saying this is it's grazing in this particular country. Yeah, this is what grazing is in this particular country. I'm glad you're about to say. I'm troubled. You're troubled. Because I realise now that I need to declare a non-procuring interest, as is my view, my window. Right. So therefore I haven't said anything up now. So bear that in mind with what I'm going to say. You didn't know I was going to say that. I didn't. Exactly. So that's why I didn't say it earlier. But as, <coughs> as, as <coughs> my view, um, do you think we missed the boat anyway? I just feel that going out there now may be a bit too late. Or, don't know. I mean, yes, it's great. Well, the scope, it, it, the scope for it to get worse. Mm. Is it? I think oh, okay. so. It's not unusual in the yeah. soccer or in cults to have games postponed, and there's plenty of wiggle. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. There's plenty of wiggle room in the fixture list, yeah. typically, for things to get rescheduled. Yeah. Um, so, I don't Frost think. Frost, obviously. Yeah, yeah. 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 it could get a lot worse than yeah. this. Yeah. I think there was a lot of fixture congestion, then it would be difficult. Well, that's one of the issues, isn't it? Because there may be the frost earlier on in the matches now, because we're two on Saturday. Mm. And it doesn't get a chance to 
sort out before the next one comes along. So it, it could be the extra team playing on the It's not just around the, the goal mats and the yeah. centre spot. It's actually the line around the edge of the pitch. Where the yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just standing there, shuffling their feet. Doing, yeah. um, it's a line. Mm -hmm. it's not running up and down. Oh yeah. yeah. Like yeah. But presumably no one's actually in charge of it, are they? They have permission to play there. Mm -hmm. So they play there. Yeah. Maybe that needs to be. Some discussions and new leads need to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yes, it would be important. And yeah, the matches do get postponed. Mm -hmm. So, are we going to sort of send an official letter sort of suggesting or expressing our concerns? Especially as they need some warning. Mm. Yeah, make a contribution. Yeah. Yes. For using that. We need a bit more formal than just the call. In correspondence to the effect that we're concerned around covering the possible the Friday. Looks on Friday. Yeah. 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 And others yet. Um, it's obviously the financial commitment of PC on this. I don't think any conditions have changed from last year, but perhaps we could put that on the agenda for next month. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Is his price the same? Well, that's what we need to oh, okay. Okay. ask. Yeah. Yeah. He's only just contacted Alan over the last few oh, okay. days. Yeah. Um, <coughs> really good Absolutely. Yeah. And, um, Given the because it's normally forty forty pound a cup, and yeah. um, if there is a request to cut the pitch in March, I can authorise that under my standing orders. Yeah. Uh, well, and how many months it is? Well, exactly. Yeah. But if if we had a nice sunny, <laughs> but it hadn't. Um, Alan did apologise. Rodney had just contacted him, yeah. and um, so it couldn't go on the agenda for this week. Okay. Okay. But just so you know. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And you got to do the next one as well. Mm -hmm. I'm on four, eight fourteen now. Don't know. Yes. We have a meeting. Okay. Well, I do have a meeting. I'm not going into too much detail, but just to say, uh, so everybody's aware where we are up to. Um, the plan inspectorate has now accepted Harley's agencies. Um, Scheme for public examination that consists of over 700 documents. Um, not easily read. Um, after the uh, we've got the registration period coming to an end on the 12th of March, mm -hmm. Parish Council has already registered as an interested party. So I don't know if we have some time. There we go. Um, but we should be encouraging as many people to register as possible and that will come out very clearly on Thursday's meeting. Um, so as I say, the work group are pouring over these documents, trying to pick out points of contention and areas of leverage where we can influence um, the opinion law in, uh, in favour of Hilton. Um, the, we, have, we are hoping to have a first draft of a document which will make be the basis of what we put into the uh, full examination uh, period by the 19th of March. Well. To say that it's only the first draft, but it will give us a starting point. Um, we do have six months to get that together. Mm. But obviously, the sooner we do this, the better. And we need to get it to Huntington District Council and Cambridge County Council as well mm -hmm. for their uh, meetings which you Okay, so the next 
discussion by which they happened on Saturday. Give the, the opportunity to uh, view the hard copy use of the application and um, to talk to each other and the staff. Um, we'll probably get, hopefully get some feedback on Thursday as to what the parishioners learnt or how their views were changed. Um, so the purpose of that meeting really is for us to uh, hear what everybody has to say, what the current ideas are, make sure that the parish council still has a clear mandate to um, push ahead with the issues that we were previously listed as the things we're going to try and do. Um, and, um, and then obviously to encourage people to register as best of interest. And so uh, not much by going into much else, we'll cover a lot of this on Thursday. And it's very simple to register. Mm. Very simple to register. Very simple to register. I've made that point. I was surprised how easy it was to do. <coughs> um, there is a link on the Parish Council website that takes you to that page and you fill in your name, then in this case the organisation you've worked for, and then you put your address, telephone number, and you put in whether you'd be interested in attending the preliminary meeting, if called upon, and um, you put your comments in. Yeah, I think the comments have to be, um, I mean, they can't be any comments, but uh, if you're going to carry on participating as a part of an interested party later on, they've got a bit of substance. Yeah, it's got to have some content to them. So, um, I think what the Parish Council did was very good. Um, that is on the website now. Which bit? The, the bit telling the you how to go. Yeah, yeah. 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 it is. Yeah, it is on. And uh, seven thirty here, Thursday. Yeah. Is it seven thirty? Yes. Yeah. Seven thirty tomorrow. Yeah, we have one. Yes, we have. Shall come clear. And we can't be here too early, can we? No. Seven fifteen. Um, just to touch on this meeting on Wednesday, mm -hmm. um, as you quite rightly said, we didn't have a lot of time to put people together to go. We thought that uh, people who have been uh, <coughs> put their hands up to, to go were um, one parish councillor, me, and the other one is a non parish councillor, but on the work group. Uh, considering where we are in the stage at the moment, I think it's quite important that um, we have somebody from the work group who can use that. Um, if we glean anything on Wednesday, of course we can report it on Thursday. Yeah. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think from what <laughs> I don't think from what I read that it's going to be more listening than speaking. I think if you go into data, it's an evening. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. Seven thirty. Yeah. Seven Thank you very much. Anything else? Yeah, good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And thank you for the working group for the hard work they're doing, wading through the documentation. Uh, next one is item four, which is committee working group members items. 4.1 is easements, update and possible decisions. No possible decisions, update it and handles on. We are working towards trying to resolve which this one. Yeah, just, there's nothing on the agenda. Hmm? There's nothing on the agenda. This is e easements. All of them are just on trundling on. All yeah. of them. All the previously discussed matters regarding the easements regarding the land pex cottage. 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 The land over the road at Mono St Francis Toff and Gore Close yeah. are still progressing. Right. If it does any help, we're all we're okay with it. Yeah. The end, no, 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 we're fine. Okay, good. And hopefully we will get to the position. Well, the it needs to keep going back, doesn't it? Make sure it's at the top of the list. Yeah. I think the ones that can come to the top of the group have been saying that they're all in the end. Yes. Yeah. If we can get a conclusion, it's a good start. Yeah. Uh, item 4.2 is uh, Huntingdon and Shire 
uh, local plan to 2036 grade. We went to a seven car. That path found a house on the 2nd of February. Mm -hmm. And this was when the initial uh, local plan target to 2036 was, I wouldn't say discussed, but the process was discussed. Um, this was an evening thing. I learnt there that Doug Jew is the executive councillor for strategic, for strategic planning and housing conservation stroke listed building. So, as our local councillor, he could be quite handy to maybe give us a summary of this. Um, so he stood up and introduced it. So that was something interesting. They have to consult with all sorts of people: parish, district council, county councils as well as HAEA, neighbouring authorities, various infrastructure bits and pieces. They also took on board the uh, Cambridge County Council long-term st transport strategy, which was adopted in November 2014. Um, this document here is a draft, and it's just for parish councils at the moment. They're, they're doing it sort of step by step. Uh, it then goes on to stakeholders and then gets issued to um, the public for their comments. So they're sort of nibbling away at it rather than just issuing it. Everyone gets a chance in their own allotted time to, to, um, to comment on it. So at the moment, it's down to us to read through it and make comments. Only clerks and chairmen can respond. Um, and that's it. <laughs> so I expect a lot from you. And that goes through into. Um, 20th of March, so we have until the 20th of March to find any errors in this. Um, it then goes on to the next stage. Well, yeah, the chances that we find them. Excuse me. So then, based on what they get back from that, it then gets readjusted, it then gets issued in June, and then it gets checked by the people in blah blah blah. The, General plan <coughs> is it gets local plan adoption in winter 2016. Okay. So it's a long process for the next 20 years, but there's a lot of stuff in it. It's not just all about housing. Um, so that's that. Uh, it's infrastructure as well. Yep, yep. I did actually dig out a couple of things. One of which was this business about the A428. The long term transport strategy identifies it. Um, looks to the long term and includes proposals needed to provide capacity for future growth in the transport network. These include proposals for capacity improvements on the A428 between Caxon Gibbet and Black Cat. Um, blah, blah, blah. And it talked about a bus lane going down the 428 initially. I read somewhere. And extra cycling and things like that. And I don't know what bus it talks about. Bus priority measures on the A428. Mm. So I don't know what to that's going to actually mean, but that was interesting. And then the other thing, just to, it's, I've just got some numbers here. So this is a comment here about the 4 to 8. So the point here is that they do take on board everything that they find and come up with this massive document. What's this say? It says numbers. Right, 2011 to 2031, growth. Houses, think of a number, 17,000. Wow. New houses in Huntingdon. Sheer, yep. Twenty four percent growth. That's we are a victim of our own success as they keep telling us because we are in a very uh, popular area. The majority of those houses, five thousand St Neats, five thousand Elkenbury, four and a half in Whitton on the Hill. So they're big numbers. So that what else did I find? And Stanton is classed as a service centre. There's big plans, I say plans, these, it does point out these are just areas that are identified, but there's no guarantee that housing will be approved. Um, but they are just areas that are identified as capable of taking housing. And so the, the old, sorry? Yeah, sorry. So the old, um, that's about the dairy site. The old dairy site is uh, allocated for, well, potential for 90 homes. Uh, sorry, Willie. Um, Cambridge Road, Fenstanton. That's as you go over the bridge towards Fenstanton. Land either side. Mm -hmm. Currently, the allotments. Mm -hmm. The allotments are staying, but the land either side is is earmarked for stuff. Um, and so there'll be potential for a hundred homes there. And uh, they do talk about the A14, and therefore there'll be noise attenuation measures 
to cover in that <coughs> strip from the existing A14. And then finally in Fenstanton, there is the nursery, which is more or less opposite the hotel. Well, you're this, this side of it. You yeah. know where that development stops. Yeah. There's a nursery there. That's, that's two and a half, uh, one and a half acres of land for approximately 25 homes. So the, the emphasis on Penn Stanton could be seen to be developing eastwards. Uh, so you've got those numbers, it's quite a few. So that's interesting. That's probably our nearest big development. Popham and Dives obviously is destined for quite a chunk. Is that? Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's big. There's a lot of stuff there. Um, and finally, it's interesting how they've already got that development at Galley Hill, which is called Lakeside Technology Park, Fenstanton, and it is called Established Employment Area. So even though it's not built, <laughs> it's an established employment area. Because I suppose you've got to bear in mind this isn't going to be issued until 2016, so um, that's a big document. And the planning on that was granted years ago. Yes, I suppose, yes. It was. Yes. So, uh, that's that really. Any mention of Hilton? No, no, Hilton doesn't come in for it, although it is mentioned in here as to um, all, all, the, all the villages are mentioned. There's nothing, nothing outlined for houses, but it does. Is it not talk about its status? Yes, its status is here. Settlement designated as rural areas, page 289. Pilot at Hilton. Settlements designated as rural areas. Okay, I should read it now. It's only two lines. Designated rural areas related to affordable housing thresholds are listed below. These are specified under statutory instruments. Blah, blah, blah. The following parishes are eligible for the reduced threshold whereby contributions towards affordable home housing can be sought on developments of six or more dwellings net as set out in national planning practice guidelines. Now, there's an awful lot of mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. settlements there, so we're listed with everything. Um, I'm trying to think of the biggest. Kim Bolton, Grafham, Fensanton. So it's a general statement, I would say, that covers a lot of places. Alconbury, uh, Sydney, it's rural. So, Hoseman, 20 houses. So, yeah, I don't quite know what that means, but it's, it's obviously going to have some. Yeah, it's eligible. But maybe we could talk to Doug Jew. Yes. Yes. When we visited, I used to see that time. For rural sections? Yeah. Yes. Didn't they not say that they didn't have a infill only three houses max? It, yes, we've not even mentioned it here. Oh, maybe right. that's a, maybe I missed that. So that's a blanket statement for other houses, perhaps other you know, things that aren't mentioned specifically. Yeah. Or I say we could have done. Yeah, because he would have been involved in the in his instigation. It's just that one copy. Yes, we get one hard copy. British, um, and then you have this, this scheme as to how you can log on and put your comments. That's good. Let's see if there's any errors. Well, it is just, just errors. paragraph 4.7 for another. Sorry? Because that's all they're asking for, is there any errors? Yes, yes. They're asking for comment. no comments. No comments. Errors. They want it to be a, a good document before it gets issued. Because that's quite important. It's going to go away. Mm. Really well, there's lots in there. It's not yeah. just housing. Yeah. There's lots of stuff in there. It's not that we're being asked to express a view on the house. No. We're no. just being asked to look for that yeah. type of house. Because if you're being asked to express a view on behalf of Parish Council, then obviously we could comply with the 20th of March. No, no, no. We'd have to come back to another meeting. No, but there are things that maybe we know are wrong or. Yeah. Yeah, not, not, com not comments and views, but things that are wrong. Yes. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, to consider any item 5, to consider any correspondence communications received, number 5.1, we recycling and uh, uh, a we recycling um, collection in. Which forms 
email from Peter Oak saying he wanted to uh, appreciate voices appreciation of the service he received on Wednesday the 18th of February. The uh, gentleman took our stuff away, he was cheerful, courteous and extremely helpful. Uh, credit to Wiser Recycling and by reflection our parish council. So thank you Peter for those nice words. Um, they are uh, proposing that we have another collection on Tuesday the 17th of November. So I would propose that we ask them to confirm that that's going to happen, and we stick it up on the website mm -hmm. and inspect it in the time. Yes, the September and October. Yeah, and it appears in that spectrum entry, um, and that will have given the parish council a little bit of income of just over one hundred and ten pounds a lot of pounds in the year. So um, very good. Yeah. HACT um, Huntington Association for Community Transport received a letter which says that it's like a grant from the Parish Council. HACT is a registered charity that provides an essential transport service and provides especially adapted vehicles to the elderly, disabled, and disadvantaged members of the rural Huntington community. In Hilton, we have one member using our transport ser or services transport. We aim to foster the independence, broaden the scope, and reduce the social isolation for members of this remote and disadvantaged community. I'm not sure whether that's Hilton that's yeah. remote and disadvantaged. Or that's disadvantaged with one other transport. Yeah, Hilton. <laughs> <We're all disadvantaged. laughs> we are delivering a door to door route and ride service for your village. The service can be used to shop, fit, friends, as well as attend medical appointments. We are considering a lifeline to our users. We are considered a lifeline to our users who can afford taxes. We look forward to hearing from you. Any contribution from the parish would make a difference to us. Any comments? Um, well, I don't feel comfortable mm -hmm. because it's. Um, we would have to look into the charity, find out what its, what it's pieces were, and uh, obviously we would then have to consider other requests for grants. Mm -hmm. And our money is given to us by parishioners, mm -hmm. and it's not earned by us, it's given to us. Yeah. So I think we have to be a bit careful as to what we then pass on to, because obviously there are lots of potential applications. I remember. You know, uh, the flying ambulance, air ambulance is one that quite often comes up, things like that. So I think it's it's Carol's way out, perhaps, because it's much easier to say, sorry, we don't do that sort of thing, but wish you well and anything else that we can do sort of thing. Would, they, would we signpost them to um, the town trust? Follow that. I think it would be better if we signpost town trust to them. Okay. Because Although it uses, although there is a parishioner that uses that facility, mm -hmm. I think normally people from the village approach the town trust. Now, obviously, the town trust can. I just feel that if we just give them an open door to the town trust, it may be, again, the cow's way out. Maybe we talk to the town trust and say, well, we've had this. Yeah. Do we pass on to you? Do you approach them? I just think it's, you need to be careful that don't just always use them as a um, uh, safety net. This parish council, can they actually do come up to the charity? It seems to have a big bell there on the hotel. I think there's a certain limit which you can give them. It'll be quite a lot. Because obviously we give the money to properties, to charities, and fortunes. Yes, that's the only donation the parish council made. I think you have to give an awful lot before you endangered that. Nothing with you, but you know, I'm sure it's a very worthy cause, but mm. then you would have many others. Yeah, and you would, by rights, you'd have to go into their accounts, their motives, blah, 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 
there's something that's just yeah. worrying. Okay. Fine. So, yeah, I agree. so we will um, ask Joe, 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 ask yeah. They may not want to be involved with it, they may want to be involved with it personally. And if they do, you say it's a nice way out, yeah. isn't it? We can't help. Yeah. But. Yeah, we need to make sure we don't just use it as a. Yeah. Item 5.3 is East Cross. Permission to request it to erect on the village green. Good Friday, Easter Tuesday. Pippa Woods has asked whether. Uh, this could be done for early Good Friday morning, we'll move first thing to Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, same position as before would be used. And, um, yeah, I think it's a good idea. Yeah. I think I'd kind of we should just mention it to Rick. Yes. Happy? Yeah, I'll propose it. I'll propose it. Yeah. Kieran okay. 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 second in. Yeah. We will say, we will say yeah. Yeah. That's lovely. Thank you very much. When is Easter, by the way? It's the third is the Friday. Okay, it's meeting. Yeah. It's right, have Oh, sorry. Item 5.4 Pavilion. Request from Jed. Uh, sorry, I am a bit tongue tied this evening. Uh, request from Sharon to look to refurbish with the help of volunteers and people support. So this is to look at um, what could, if there's better use that could be eked out of the um, cricket pavilion. Mm -hmm. It sits there. Uh, mm -hmm. Idle. Uh, most of the time. Mm -hmm. That's That's right. <coughs> Cricket is which was that? Mm. Smoking mm. Mm. When we were banned, yeah. Kieran? Do you remember? Oh, crap. I forgot all that. What is that? You mean the band? You mean the band? Yeah, I remember you. Trump band? Yeah. 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 This letter from the channel is very well written. And uh, I think it's a good catalyst, actually. It's about time, mm. actually. I have to do something about the pavilion. I think. Crowd Council need to be involved in this. this is not something we're going to hand it over to the volunteer group. I think there's a um, uh, property, property owned by Parish Council. It needs to be controlled, any development needs to be controlled by the Parish Council. Um, to that end, I think that's my new second work group. I think that's Sharon to join it. Yeah. Nice and happy for that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you say, it's, I think we have to be careful we don't put the cart before the horse, don't we? Because there's great ideas here for how we can raise the money and what we can do. But I need to be happy that we find a use for it first of all, or uses for it. Yeah, well, I think That's the first thing to do, actually, is, is to produce a reason as to what, before anything happens, mm. as to what potentially is that we could be used for. And yes, it's absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Make sure that issues such as attracting parking on the building and um, uh, you know, the scope of it, whether it's just for the village or whether it's for outside, whether it's raised, all these things need to be put into some kind of document, yeah, uh, which we then agree to. And then I think we probably uh, need some committee to run it from that point on. Yeah. So that we're, again, so we don't lose control of it. Yeah, because it is a parish. It's a parish building, parish council over this one. Parish building over um, There were some proposals put together a few years ago with a cost of forty thousand pounds. Yeah, that's a great thing to it. Wasn't it? Sorry? That was to increase the footprint, wasn't it? I don't know it was. Okay. It was to, to incorporate the the storage room, wasn't it? The storage room is going to get incorporated. But I think it was a major redevelopment, but I'm not entirely sure I saw what it was going to be used for. Yeah. I think it said, and this would then end. Because again, we wouldn't want it to impact on the village or no, Exactly, yes. Because we don't have a pension business. No, we don't have a competition. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
successive. It is. Yeah, but that's if it's like some cricket club as well. So yes. I thought it would be a parish mm -hmm. council cricket club and police week as the main users, potential users, mm -hmm. if you can find some users. I think it's the else about this now. I think part of, you're right, creating a remit and getting the size of the opportunity is the first and foremost step, isn't it? And who knows, there may be an opportunity for um, a local produce shop, open market, whatever. Who knows? I'm just off the top of my head. Who knows? But I think rather than the second guessing, right. it's definitely just a football club, cricket, and. No, I, mean, I think it's the right plan to start the Yes, because yeah. yes. they're the ones that use it at the moment. Yeah. So obviously they don't want to be dis disadvantaged and see how the snowballs. So, the proposal is that the working group is set up to look at this. And Kieran has proposed that he would be on that working group. Will he just say he would be on it? Any other? Parish Council? I'm happy to go on it. Great. Well done. Thank you very much. You'll discuss the liaison with Sharon? Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to make a beat now? I'm very happy to do that. Yeah. Um, don't mind, so sure you can thrash out with the real I know that fits your view. You can thrash out with the real one. Yeah, I'll have to do that. Yeah, I don't see it. Good. Thank you. We look forward to receiving your updates during the course of the coming months. Come on then. No comments on the front of the front Item 6, to consider and decide upon... Oh, yeah, better have Yeah. What's going on? It hasn't got any sort of objective other than the remit. It's just not just spending money. No, no, the remit is just to find out what's going on. Research. It wouldn't be bad. Yeah. So, can I propose it with you there? Yeah, I'll propose it. Grant's proposing the panel. Will he second it? All those in favour. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, item six is to consider and decide on any matters relating to financing this assessment. Six point one authorised payment of the bill to be paid for this summer. Which was uh, Joe Salary, four three five, station in Tona, sixty three forty eight. Uh, John Carter standing order 575 for February. Estimated electricity directed at £6.53. Uh, Bernie is £88.20 handyman. And the other one is Atlas Tree Surgery, which is the tree work carried out in January, which is £2,448. But that includes £408 VAT, bringing it back into the £2,040 original quote. And of course, we would get the VAT. Good. Yeah. I'm just going back to that item. I presume our tree surgery, tree wardens happy, is he? Yes. Good. Sorry, I forgot to mention it. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> Perhaps when we send that check, we can send a letter yeah. saying, Yes, <coughs> gentlemen, thank you very much for a great job. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Good um, feedback. Yeah. Um, so I would um, propose that we pay those bills. Would you like to second that? Yeah. <laughs> 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 All in favour? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I can come to the floor. Sorry. Item six point two is to look at electricity provided. Joe went off and um, at the end of the meeting he was charged with um, sorting out the electricity supply and basically payment at a price of carrot. Sorry. Yeah. Well, just after um, the last meeting with Anne's suggestion of looking down the eco route, I um, went ahead and did that. And actually, Ecotricity, although their daily um, per kilowatt hour charge is slightly higher, their daily charge is almost half of what um, other companies wanted to charge. So I think, whilst it's not a huge saving overall, I think it will be a saving if we go with Ecotricity because that's sort of the slightly larger part of our bill is the daily charge, oh, right. daily standard charge. Mm -hmm. So rather than 27, 26, 27p, it's down to 14p. Yeah. So that would be my suggestion. Because it was a date, I thought. Yeah, well, the 4th of March. Oh, I need to, let, well, I'm going to need to let it 
eon now. So. And how long are we committing ourselves for? Uh, just a year. Oh, okay. Fixed term? Fixed price for the year? Yeah. There we go. Halving, that's good. Yeah. Okay, Brian. Yeah. Yeah. Any questions? Okay. No. Proposed we are uh, proposed that we um, make that switch. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody like to second that? Thank you. And will in favour? Thank you. Very much. Oh, I'll second oh. I have some seven. Councillors items, information only, no discussion, no decision. No. Kieran? Oh. Graham? Yes. This uh, member's interest document that came out. Mm -hmm. No discussion. No, no, I'm not discussing. I'm going to just go off. Response date. You said ASAP. And how, is it, how frequently are we going to do this? It's like an annual thing now. I don't know. I just was sent an email got, asking for that's all we did it last year. Right. Yeah. Okay. So it's just because you knew that you had to do it. Yeah, I think so. Oh, so it does mention 2012, maybe regulations of 2012. Okay. I, think I have three things. Uh, data next meeting will be Tuesday the 7th of April because uh, it, uh, it would be Monday the 6th, which is Easter Monday. Oh, so you're going to Tuesday? That's what the standing order is saying. Next business day. Okay. Okay. All booked? Yeah. Excellent. Same time. Um, <clears throat> Alan has advised us that he is asking Adrian Snoop to be involved in um, doing the necessary road closures through the summer before the feast week on the cricket. And he just wanted to let us know and ask if we will support Adrian if he needs any assistance, um, which we'll do when he comes to us. And if it's, a parish, if it's something that needs to bring to the parish council meeting, we will. So this presumably now the road closes is for feast week rather than for cricket club. Right. Okay. Right. <coughs> and um, I have had some um, IT problems over the last month, and because of that, I was unable to get into the agenda. Um, the emergency plan and flood plan, which I had meant to remind Joe to put on the agenda because we were going to um, adopt at this meeting, so they will be on the agenda for next meeting. Thank you very much. Meeting closed. Thanks everyone for coming.